Godzilla. This special of Godzilla was released in 2014 and is that by Guy Woods and Sarah. Aaron Taylor Johnson, Elizabeth Austin, Sully Hawkins, Ken Watsby, and Brian Cranston. And basically, this film has your classic Godzilla now. Because at the start of the film, we see this big nuclear explosion happen. And in this big nuclear explosion, Brian Cranston's character's wife dies. But then it jumps to 15 years later, and Brian Cranston's character is obsessed with what caused this big nuclear explosion. Because, well, his wife died there. Long story short, he brings him and his son, Pilar Aaron Taylor Johnson, into where the big nuclear explosion happens and basically long story short they find this meter which is this big spider-like flying monster and then basically long story short that big spider-like flying monster called meter i think that's what it's called i might be wrong there apologies if i am this big spider-like flying monster called meter gets released out into the world What's at the same time though godzilla is re-emerging after all these years and you get sally hawkins and ken want to be to both work for monarch which is like big monster secret service who are going around the place and say oh godzilla can't exist he died something years ago but then obviously this one's called godzilla so he can't exist but basically you have godzilla coming out and he's going to fight this big Muto, which is a spider-like flying monster. These two big monsters are traveling across the world to go and fight each other. Once at the same time, though, another Muto appears. And this other Muto, this other big spider-like flying monster, is pregnant. And if it's not careful, it's going to lay its eggs on the ground in Tokyo. But long story short, Godzilla becomes a savior. We're all rooting for Godzilla. Yes, come on, we have, we have to have Godzilla to win. But everything comes down to the third act of the film, where Godzilla and these two Mutos, these two big spider-like flying monsters, fight each other in a big, epic battle. But at the same time, though, we also focus on Aaron Taylor Johnson's character in the film. And Aaron Taylor Johnson's character, he is a soldier in the US Army. And basically, we followed his character through most of the film, through all the monster havoc. This is more of a character-driven monster film, because we follow his character more than anything. Like, Dommy Wong, you still see Godzilla in there, so you see all these other monsters in there as well. But, more than anything, we follow Aaron Taylor Johnson's character, who works for the US Army, who's in there as well, who's trying to help all these people where all this monster havoc's gone. At the same time, the Austin's character also comes in and out of it as well, because she plays his wife. Right, so that's basically the plot from basically Godzilla's back and so are these two big spider-like flying monsters called Mutos and they're both travelling across the world to go and fight each other but at the same time we mainly focus on Aaron Taylor Johnson's character as he tries to navigate through all this monster havoc but at the same time though Elizabeth Olsen's character is falling there and so is Brian Cranston's character, so is Sally Hawkins' character and so is Ken Wansby's character and basically everything comes down to the third act of the film where Godzilla and these two Mutos, I think that's what they're called, go and fight each other in a big epic battle and that's basically the plot of Godzilla, this version of Godzilla, Guy Edwards' version of Godzilla. And I must admit, I actually kind of like this film. I mean, it does have problems. No, I'm not going to lie, and I am going to talk about some of my problems in this review today. But I do like this film for the most part. Before I get into what I think is good about the film, what I think is bad about the film, just say this. I have no connection to Godzilla at all. Like, I didn't grow up watching Godzilla films. I think I watched one Godzilla film as a child, which was, I think, oh, what was it? Is it one where they have a baby Godzilla? I forgot what it's called now, but I remember actually really liking that. But I don't have any connection to any Godzilla films or any Godzilla lore or anything. I never really got into Kaju. I don't, I don't really know anything about Godzilla. I just watch the films. That's what I do. I don't know anything about the Godzilla lore or anything like that. But saying that, I have a bit of a soft spot for monster movies. I must admit, like, every time a King Kong movie or a Godzilla movie comes out, I must admit, I get a bit excited. How many times nowadays we get a Godzilla movie or a King Kong movie? Because they're so expensive to make, and then when they do come out, you know, whether good or not, they always have a bit of a soft spot for them. You know, how many times do you actually get to see King Kong and Godzilla on screen nowadays? I mean, not that often, and obviously, you know, King Kong beats Godzilla's coming out. And by the way, I should say, I'm actually filming this review before the Godzilla v Kong trailers come out, so apologies. Even when the Kong v Godzilla trailer does come out, I'm not actually going to watch it. I don't want to watch it. I want, I just want to experience a big monster action for the first time. I've seen a couple of images so far, it was good, but I'm not I, I'm not going to watch the trailer, and I haven't seen the trailer up to this point. It's not been released yet, actually, by the time I'm actually filming this review. But by the time it actually does come out, I will watch the trailer, so there you go. I am actually reviewing the other monster films in this monsterverse. I think that's what it is now, you know, this monsterverse of this this film, then Kong Skyline, then Godzilla. King of the Monsters on this channel, but I won't be watching the Godzilla Kong trailer, so I won't refer to that in any of my views. But anyway, I just wanted to say that. But, the thing is with this Godzilla film, I think it works for the most part. But at the same time, though, I think it has one big problem, which kind of goes into other little problems as well. And my big problem with this film is simply Aaron Taylor Johnson's performance. I actually think Aaron Taylor Johnson's a good actor. I really like him in kick -Ass. That's actually a fantastic film, in my opinion. And he's a really good performance as kick actor in that film. I really like his performance in that film. The problem with his performance in the film is it's not emotional enough. It's nothing that I can really relate to. There's nothing, there's nothing like which I really had any emotional connection with his character in this film. And I think that comes down to two things. His performance and then the fact that the characters are actually quite generic. And the only interesting character is Brian Cranston's character. Let's give him much away, but he's not in it that much. And that's the thing with this film. Like, Aaron Taylor Johnson's performance isn't that good. And he's a protagonist. We're meant to follow him on this journey while speaking havoc around him and I just never felt any emotional connection to his character. And I think that is a problem, because you want to feel emotional connection to the character. You want to be aligned with this character on his journey whilst all these big monsters are going on. And I never did. And honestly, it's just 
his performance was not good in the film. There's one scene in particular, which I'm not going to give too much away because you haven't actually seen the film, but there's one scene in particular where a certain member of his family is dying or quite close to him, and basically he's just watching that person die and he just goes, No! 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 No. What is that performance? Poor Tony Bad, you know, what if your close family members are dying and that's the things you're going to say? That's the performance you're going to give? And just, I wish he was better in the film. I wish I felt more of an emotional connection to his character. And I think that also comes down to the fact that the character is a bit generic. And that's a problem for a character-driven monster film. That's the thing which Peter Jackson's King Kong does so well. Like, Peter Jackson's King Kong is brilliant in my opinion. I absolutely love that film. And what I love so much about that film, it's a character-driven monster film. But at the same time though, it delivers on the monsters and it also delivers on the characters. I think, I think I might watch the director's cut here. Apology if I have, so I might be a bit wrong. It, but P. Jackson's King Kong, you spend about an hour with the characters before anyone gets a skull out, and that's done really interesting because then you have that emotional connection to the characters. Like, like when something bad happens, and I'm like, oh my god, what's gonna happen to Jack Bass' character? What's gonna happen to Aiden Rhodes' character? Or Naomi Watts' character in that film? And that's what makes P. Jackson's King Kong so fantastic, in my opinion. But the problem is with this film, it is a character driven monster film, but the characters aren't that interesting and the performances aren't that good. I mean, Elizabeth Austin, she's great in the film, and actually, I think it's Elizabeth Austin's best performance, in my opinion. But the thing is with her character in the film, whenever she's around, I don't tell Johnson's character is just like, <sighs> but the thing is with her character, she's just so generic. She's just like the woman in the crowd who's screaming and running away from all the things going on. I'm just like, be a bit more interesting. That's the, my problem with this film. And at the same time, I think that's the same with Alan Johnson's character. He literally just plays your average male action man in this film. He's in the US Army, he's trying to help people. But at the same time, like, he doesn't really have much of an emotional range. There's scenes of the film when he sees big monsters going on. Well, he's meant to in real life, when I've actually seen that. But, you know, the scenes of the film where he actually sees big monsters wreaking havoc on big cities and everything. And he just is like, just what? Just give him more of a performance, you know. And I get, you know, he's a, he's a soldier in the army, his character is anyway, and you know, he's not really giving him much emotional range. And I kind of get that to do with his character, but still, when significant moments in the film are happening, like those moments of your family is dying, give off a bit of a better performance, in my opinion. And also, my biggest problem is the film the fact that the characters aren't that interesting and performances aren't that fantastic. Because I really like Brian Cranston in the film, but not to give too much away, but he's not in it that much. And at the same time, though, I kind of like Charlie Hall because I kind of like Ken Wong's character in the film, but at the same time, they're, they're just kind of there to drive the plot. They're just kind of to go, to go, okay, Godzilla can't exist. On a way, Godzilla can exist. And we follow more on Alan Taylor Johnson's character, who's generic. And honestly, I just didn't like Alan Taylor Johnson's performance that much. I mean, I think he's a great actor, got nothing against the actor at all. I think he's a great actor, just didn't like his performance in the film. Saying all that, I did kind of enjoy this film. I think it has a lot of things going for it. But one thing I must talk about before, you know, I go into things I actually really like about it, is his use of Godzilla in the film. Like, I remember when this one came out, a lot of people criticised it for his use of Godzilla. Like, Godzilla's only like 15 minutes of the film or so, or whatever it's like. He's not in much of the film. And this film's like 2 hours and 15 minutes as well, so he's not actually in much of the film. Personally, I don't agree with that criticism, and here's why. Look at Star Wars for New Hope. Darth Vader is the main villain in that film, but he's only in it for 20 minutes. But the thing is, after that first Darth film came out, everyone was saying Darth Vader is one of the, you know, classic movie villains of all time. And yet he was only in that film for 20 minutes. But you feel him in every scene, you know he's such a prominent character and he's just, he's, he's got such a presence when he shows up in Star Wars for New Hope. And that's what makes Darth Vader so, so good in that film. And the thing is, I'm actually going to compare it to Godzilla in this film, because the good thing is with Godzilla in this film, yeah, he's not in every single scene, but... You know when he's there, you feel his presence in those scenes, and when Godzilla does show up, you feel like you've earned those moments. Honestly, you really do in the best way possible. Oh, that's Godzilla! Yes, this is a Godzilla moment! Finally, this is a good Godzilla moment! I mean, wait, but I really liked that. I really liked that, unlike Godzilla King of the Monsters, which I will go on to review, by the way, but unlike that film, where you literally have, okay, that's Godzilla again, oh, Godzilla's back out, oh, there's Godzilla again, oh, there's another Godzilla monster, oh, there's another Godzilla monster, and there's Godzilla again. And that's my big problem with Godzilla King of the Monsters, it's too much Godzilla, in my opinion. But the thing is, with this film, I actually think they use Godzilla really well. I like not having him in much of the film, because when he is in there, you, you feel like you've earned that moment with Godzilla. At the same time, though, you do feel his presence in the film. And I really like that they kind of build up. I really like that they build up to the final fight in the film. And I think the final fight in the film between, you know, Godzilla and these Mutos worked really, really well. You know, these big spider-like flying monsters, which works really, really well in the film, in my opinion. And honestly, I think the visuals are spectacular. That's one of my personal praises to the film. I think, honestly, the visuals are spectacular in the film. I think Gareth Edwards, who, by the way, later went on to actually go and direct Rogue on a Star Story, which is a film I really like. I think Gareth Edwards did a superb job making the film. I really do. One of the things I think worked really well in the film is the music scored by Alexander Dreskart in the film, which works really, really well in my opinion. Like it's a proper monster score, it's a proper Godzilla score in my opinion. There's a lot of fantastic moments when Alexander Dreskart's score comes through absolutely fantastically. 
Just look at the opening scene of the film. You learn about the instructions of Godzilla, you know, this whole thing to the nuclear test, the atomic bomb test. They weren't, trying to, they weren't trying to test anything, they were trying to kill something, and that's what you get in the opening scene of the film. I really like the way Alexander Despard's score is used in the opening scene of the film, because that's all you get. You don't get any dialogue in the opening scene of the film, in the opening credits of the film. All you get is, you know, stock footage as well. It's kind of stock footage, I know it's not like proper stock footage, and it's not proper stock footage, because actually Godzilla's in that stock footage. But you kind of get all this stock footage in the opening scene of the film, all I have in the background is Alexander Despard's score, which works really, really well. And I Really like the opening scene of the film because there's no dialogue. You get the instructions of who got what happened to Godzilla up to this point, and then all you have in the background is a brilliant orchestral music score by Alexander Desplat, which works really well in the film. I am a huge fan of the music score of the film. I really am. At the same time, though, like I said, I think it's got some spectacular visuals. I think the monster moments are really good. It's got some monster jam packed action. At the same time, though, I think it's well made. I think it is constructive to a degree as well, but I just wish I liked it more. I really do, because I really want to like this film. I am a sucker for Godzilla films, like I said before, because I feel it's trying to be a fantastic film. I feel it's trying to be a good film in the end. That's what I feel it's trying to be. And I feel, in the end, Gareth Edwards just, just gone ahead and made a good Godzilla film instead of, uh, instead of a character of a monster film. Because I think the film would have actually succeeded better if he did just a good Godzilla film. And, you know, didn't focus on the characters as much. I mean, maybe it wouldn't have been loved by critics as much, but I still, I think it actually would have been a much more enjoyable film. But instead, we get all these moments with Anthony Johnson's character, which, honestly, we just don't care about. And I think that's where the film suffers. I do. I just, I wanted to feel more invested in this. So I wanted to feel more invested in the characters, and I just didn't feel that. I don't think it's a bad film anyway. I actually quite enjoyed watching the film. I quite enjoyed watching it last night, actually. But I just wish I liked it more. I really do. It could have been better, and I think it should have been better. But saying that, I do kind of like this film, and I think it does have a lot of things going for it. And so for that reason, I'm going to say that this version of Godzilla, I'm going to give it, hmm, I'm going to give it about, I'm going to give it about 7.3 out of 10. I actually really enjoy this film, I must admit, it does have some really enjoyable moments, some moments which, you know, I can still remember now, I've actually really got and really enjoyable, like moments of Godzilla, you know, towards the end of the film, you're kind of rooting for him in the end, I really like that about it, I, think, I do think it is well made, I do, at the same time though, I think it's constructed well, I like some of the performances in the film, I like Sally Hawkins, I like Ken Wanty, I like, you know, Brian Cranston's film, and I really like Elizabeth Olsen's performance in the film, but the thing is, I don't like Anthony Johnson's performance in the film, and he's a protagonist, and it's just a bit like, hmm, but I do think the film is good, I don't think it deserves, I don't think it really deserved that, you know, criticism it got from a lot of fans when this came out and so all in all i think godzilla is a good film which is not a great one and so for that reason i'm going to say that godzilla is a 7.3 out of 10 for me anyway guys what do you think of godzilla do you love it do you hate it or have you just not watched it and if not why not please you comment down below and know your thoughts in the comment section below Anyway guys, thank you as always for watching, and if you haven't yet, please do click down below and like subscribe on the video, I look forward to many more, both film and TV's come very soon on this channel. See you guys again soon, bye bye for now, bye!